Good evening. Testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Okay, good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Wells with the Santa Cedar Chamber of Commerce. It's my honor and pl pr privilege, excuse me, to welcome you here tonight. What should I do? I think we're good. Okay. So again, welcome everyone. <laughs> it's my honor and privilege to, to welcome you here this evening. Um, want to first of all, I think we've got uh, Mrs. Reyes, our superintendent of Santa Cedar High School, in attendance or uh, principal, excuse me. Principal Lopez. Lopez. We were talking about Mr. Reyes. I apologize. <laughs> principal Lopez from the Santa Cedar High School uh, with us this evening. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, Councilmember Moreno staff. You raise your hand. There they, there they are. Uh, I guess we'll still call Gerardo, even though he left us for old time issue, but uh, he's, he's glad to have you with us this evening. And everybody uh, should know Alondra, uh, a, a recent addition to the team, to the fantastic District 1 team. So Alondra, good evening. Um, Want to make sure that Carlos Lacaro from San Diego PD is with us this evening. I uh, do want to thank the library staff uh, for our wonderful facilities uh, th this evening. And certainly last but not least on, on my list, our, our uh, education collaborative of the chamber, who is our fantastic committee that's put this together tonight. Cynthia, you please stand, take some applause. Cynthia Woo. is the chair of our, of our, our group. And then uh, our other collaborative members are around the room. You'll see them with the, the name tags on with the chamber. Hey, wave, everyone. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, some housekeeping things. Uh, if you need to use the restroom, Restrooms right outside these doors, right across on the, to my left, across the hall on this side. Um, masks are recommended for those that want to use them. If you don't have one and want one, they are up here. Uh, if not, you are free to do that as well. We hope everybody's vaccinated and so we're safe. Uh, refreshments, please help yourselves. There's uh, pan dulce, co coffee, water, uh, some donuts and fruit in the back. And I know many of you have already done so, but uh, there are pads and pens around the room. If you have questions that you want to direct to the uh, council member, uh, please do so. Alice is begging you to ask these questions. So, um, that's the housekeeping. With that, uh, I get the easy job because I get to introduce somebody that doesn't need an introduction. Uh, we've, we've, for uh, almost four years now, we've had a fantastic representation uh, from our council member, uh, Vivian Moreno, here in San Isidro. Um, I can tell you, because I've seen it firsthand, we don't have a fiercer voice on the MTS board, a fiercer voice in the city council. Um, certainly from day one, she has made sure that District 8 was getting it, its deserved and bigger piece of the pie, and that San Isidro within District 8 was getting a bigger piece of that pie. Uh, so again, I, it's easy. I don't need to tell you anything more about her. Uh, she's been doing a fantastic job for us, and we're going to get to hear about that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause for Council Member Vivian Moreno. Um, I've been told there's translation happening. Is that correct? Is there translation happening simultaneously? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bueno, voy a tratar yo. No soy profesional, pero voy a hacer el intento. Okay. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I always say you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, so I do appreciate you guys being here. Um, first and foremost, I do want to thank uh, the San Isidro Library for hosting us, so let's give all the staff a big round of applause. Thank you so much. And then also uh, the San Isidro Chamber of Col uh, Chamber, the Ch Chamber of College, listen to me. The San Isidro Chamber uh, Educational Committee uh, is the one that uh, is 
put this all together, so thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. Y buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Vivian Moreno. Soy la regidora de este distrito. Y también, y no lo dije en inglés, pero también soy residente aquí de San Isidro. Les dimos un aplauso a, todo, a todos los trabajadores de la biblioteca y también a la Cámara de Comercio, el Comité de Educación. ¿Sí lo hice bien? ¿Sí? Ok, perfecto. Ok. I, what I mentioned is, um, I actually didn't mention, but I'm a resident of San Isidro. I live off of Dairy Mart and uh, San Isidro Boulevard. And I grew up with two hardworking parents in the South Bay. Uh, my mom retired from Jack in a Box after 41 years. And my dad was in the logistics industry. Uh, we, um, I am a product of Sweetwater Unified. Um, y lo que estaba diciendo es que mi mamá trabajó por 41 años en Jack in a Box. Mi papá tenía su propio negocio en la, en la industria logística aquí en la mesa de Otay y nos inculcaron el trabajo, ¿verdad? Yo fui producto de Sweetwater Unified eh, y, y I think that's all I said. Y es lo que dije. <laughs> okay, um, I uh, graduated from UCSD and um, I started working as a broker buyer in the metal industry, in the private industry. I have a poli-sci degree, it was not my passion, it was lucrative, but it wasn't my calling. And so I moved over, um, I started actually volunteering a lot. Um, I volunteered with Mana de San Diego through their Hermanitas program. I was a mentor to a young lady for five years. Um, I joined a political action committee as well and got involved politically. And from there, um, that is when I started working for my predecessor in 2010 uh, for council member David Alvarez. Um, eh, yo trabajaba en, en una distribuidora de metales como compradora de metal cuando me recibí de la universidad de UCSD. No era, no era mi pasión, ¿verdad? Yo, tenía, yo, tengo, yo soy, tengo una licenciatura de ciencias políticas, así que para mí fue más, me jaló más la ciencia política. Eh, cuando me recibí, pero teníamos que trabajar, ¿verdad? Eso fue lo, lo que nos inculcaron. Y eh, yo empecé eh, siendo voluntaria con organizaciones sin fondos de lucro. Mana de San Diego fue una de las organizaciones que yo fui voluntaria. Fui una guía por cinco años por, con una muchachita que vivía en National City que se recibió de SDSU. Así que hicimos buen trabajo en ese caso. Y en el 2010 empecé a trabajar por eh, David Álvarez, el, regidor, el, el ex regidor de esta área. And so, um, So yeah, I worked for council member David Alvarez for eight years. Um, I worked as a policy advisor, director of binational affairs, um, you name it, I did it, right? I was a rep for San Isidro and Otay Mesa. But in 2016, I decided to run uh, for office for city council. It was not a easy run. Um, I actually walked 8,000 doors in 2018 uh, to get elected. Uh, but after two very hard years, uh, I was elected in December 18th, 2018. Eh, yo trabajé, como les expliqué, con el regidor David Álvarez por ocho años. Hice relaciones binacionales, fui representante de San Isidro, fui representante de, de Ochai Mesa, trabajé en la póliza también. Eh, pero en el 2016 decidí, re, decidí eh, postularme. Recibí, decidí postularme. Eh, no fue algo fácil. Eh, yo, yo caminé personalmente, Vivian Moreno, ocho mil puertas para ser elegida. Y en el 2018, después de dos años, me elegí. Y antes de... Y ahí estamos en la comunidad, las diferentes cosas que estamos eh, pues promoviendo, ¿verdad? Luchando por estas diferentes... Eh, casos que tenemos. Ah, una cosa que no les, no les expliqué, no les explico en inglés, I promise. El distrito 8 está, es, 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 está en dos secciones. Tenemos la sección norte, que es básicamente el 94 al 15, a división, y luego empieza National City y Chula Vista. Y luego sigue distrito 8, que es Ota Mesa, Nestor, Egger y San Isidro. So one of the things I didn't mention is San Isidro is broken up into two sections, you guys. We have the northern part of our section, which is the 15 to the 94 to Division Street. We have two municipalities that divide the southern part, which is Egger, Otay Mesa, Nestor, and I'm missing one. Egger, Otay Mesa, Nestor, San Isidro, right? And so, um, so that's one of the things, the distinctions I want to make. We have, as, as you can imagine, very different needs in both areas but we try to fill the needs. So um, before moving on to our agenda, I'd like to introduce Alondra Alvarado. 
She is my council representative here in San Isidro. Eh, quiero presentarles formalmente a la señorita Londra Alvarado. Es mi representante aquí de San Isidro. Cualquier cosa, Alondra está al tanto. Eh, so I'm going to move on to an agenda. I like agendas. I like to be very clear about what we're going to talk about today. So today we're going to talk about capital improvement projects in San Isidro specific. This is a San Isidro specific conversation. And then um, if you guys have other questions regarding other parts of my community, I'm happy to engage uh, and we could always follow up. Um, the assistance programs uh, that we have here in the city of San Diego for folks and also what we've been doing since the pandemic hit, particularly in San Isidro. Um, la agenda de hoy va a ser eh, los, uh, I don't know how to say capital improvement projects, los proyectos capitales de la ciudad de San Diego. Eh, también la, los programas de asistencia y también qué es lo que hemos hecho como oficina desde que, desde que inició la pandemia. Ok, so let's get started. So, uh, since I first came into office, um, I've been, as Jason mentioned, I've been a, a very strong advocate for the San Isidro Intermodal Transit Center. Um, I included some renderings. Um, this is a, a project that is, um, at the moment, we are in the design phase of it. Uh, so we're going to, I'm sorry, we're going to start the outreach, but MTS has sent over $2 million for the design phase. Este es un proyecto de, de mejoramientos capitales. Eh, este proyecto es, es la estación de San Isidro. San Isidro uh, is very interesting, you guys. That's not interesting. I, you know, one of the things that, um, that I often tell my colleagues is that we've been left behind. There's, there's no way to spin it. We have been absolutely left behind. And I tell folks to look at capital improvement projects in our communities to see how we've actually been left behind. I tell my colleagues, I could take you to five open lots that were promised to us as parks. You, all you have to do is go down to San Isidro uh, Trolley Station to see the injustice that we've received from, San Isidro, from the city of San Diego. Um, nos han tratado diferente. No hay una forma bonita de decirlo. La ciudad eh, no ha puesto mucho enfoque en el sur de San Diego. Eh, y esto es, una, este es un ejemplo de, de, del enfoque que no ha puesto, ¿verdad? Y esta es la estación de San Isidro. Cuando uno cra, cru, cruza, cuando uno, cruz, cuando, cuando uno cruza, gracias, eh, voy a necesitar mucha ayuda. Cuando uno cruza la, la, la garita de, de San Isidro, cruza y lo primero que dice es, ¿para dónde voy? ¿O dónde voy a ir? O sea, no es, no es la... la no es lo que uno espera cruzar la cruzada más cruzada del mundo, right? When you cross San Isidro border, the first thing you do is you cross and you say, which way am I going to go? It doesn't give you that power, right, that we hold because we are the most cross border of the world, not of the Western Hemisphere, not of North America, of the world. And so this is a project that when I joined um, Sandag board and when I joined MTS, I said, this has to be our number one project. Why? Because 12,000 people go on this trolley on any given day. 12, 000, más de 12,000, tengo los, los, la cifra aquí, 13,325 personas suben este trolley cada día. Cada día, el trolley, en la estación de trolley que sigue es la 12 y Imperial con 6,725 personas. The next busiest trolley station is Imperial and 12 with 6,725 uh, people boarding on that station. So they need to pay attention to us, right? Uh, when you think about... Um, When you think about, I always mention this because when you think about what MTS does for Comic-Con and all the wrappings and the brouhaha that they do, on four days of Comic-Con, we get the same amount of people as one day in San Isidro. So this intermodal transit center, it, perdón, eh, lo que digo es que en, en cuando viene Comic-Con a San Diego, MTS hace un... Despa, no sé qué palabra más, pero un despapache por Comic-Con, ¿verdad? O sea, mueve tierra, mar, y, y por un día de, de la gente que se sube en San Isidro es el equivalente de cuatro días de Comic-Con, por un día. Así que más atención se necesita poner a esta estación. ¿Dónde estamos en esta estación ahorita? Estamos en, apenas están empezando a salir a la comunidad a, preguntar la, a preguntarle a la comunidad ¿Qué es lo que quieren? ¿Qué es lo que quieren ver? 
mucha gente nos ha dicho baños, ¿verdad? Así que eh, pusimos el, 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 nom, el número y el nombre de la persona que está, que es la persona indicada en Sandag. So they're doing outreach right now, Sandag is. Sandag does all the transportation planning of the whole region. And so they're going to do the planning of it. MTS sent $2 million over. Um, and Zach is your contact person, so please get involved. I don't want to make one step without the community. And so this is my calling to you to get on the list and make sure you're getting all, um, all the contact information. Okay, so we'll go on to the next one. Uh, the next one is Cypress Drive Cultural Corridor Project. It's an, another uh, very crucial project for San Isidro. Um, I do want to acknowledge Casa Familiar for all their support for the Cultural Corridor. Um, este es, este es básicamente, this is an alley essentially right now. Um, and we, um, a few things on this item. Um, and you guys, for the people who've been in the last, I think this is the third presentation that I do in San Isidro in the last week. Um, I always say, if you're not a CIP, you are nothing in the city of San Diego. You have to be a capital improvement project. It's sort of like a bank account. So we open up a bank account, and I've seen the bank account for $5,000 be put into these capital improvement projects. So this uh, corridor is basically going to make it safer for our community to be able to walk and bike through that, the historical section of, um, of San Isidro. Um, and so, and this came out, this literally, I believe it came out of the plan update, right? The San Isidro plan update? That's where it originated from. Uh, as a paseo. So that's another place, you guys, where I welcome you guys to extrapolate capital improvement projects from, from their plan update. Um, and this is the sec second time we extrapolate a capital improvement project from a plan update. The other one is the Southwest Park right by Southwest Middle School. It was literally item P14 in the Otay Mesa Nestor Community Plan Update, and now it's a capital improvement project. So, all right, so we'll move on from that. Also, um, one of the, and, and I, I forgot to say this, you guys, uh, when it comes to um, capital improvement projects and how the city is um, moving away from not paying attention to us, you are sitting in an example of the city paying attention, the city leaders paying attention to our community. You're sitting in the newest library of the whole library system in the city of San Diego. Our old library is actually the it was it was the oldest library in the in the system. Cuando menciono eh, mejoramientos de capital por la ciudad de San Diego, norma, como dije, normalmente nos han dejado atrás. Pero este es un ejemplo, este edificio es un ejemplo de que la gente elegida, bueno, de, de la gente como yo, ¿verdad?, que ya les estamos haciendo caso. Esta biblioteca es la biblioteca más nueva en el sistema de bibliotecas de San Diego. La, en la que estábamos antes eh, fue, fue construida en 1923 y era la más vieja en el sistema. Así que les estamos haciendo caso, estamos escuchando la comunidad y... Vamos a otro proyecto. We're going to the next project, which is Byer Park. Um, can I have some water, Alondra? Um, since I was elected, um, you know, this Byer Park was, thank you so much, uh, was one that was promised to us, I want to say, over 15 years ago, 20 years ago now. And um, I'm happy to say that the general development plan was approved in 2020. Um, you have all the amenities. It's a state-of-the-art park, and it's going to be located at the end of Bayer. Literally, you're going to be able to walk. Uh, dog park, skate park, picnic spaces. Um, this, is, um, this, is, this is a really important, um, I think, capital improvement project in our community. Um, and, and one of the things, one, as a council member, one of the things that I've been advocating for, and, and that's one of the things that the city will always say, there's not enough money. We don't have enough money. The graph goes like this, right, Jason? And I say, I don't care about your graph. You've left us behind for so many years that we need to have all the money that we possibly can have. We're not going to take one-ninth of the funding of capital improvement projects because we've been left behind for so many years. Go out and look for money. And um, I know that there's a lot of money out there, and we have been successful. Last year, I'm happy to report, uh, that District 8 received $30 million from state funding. 
for District 8 only, not for the whole city of San Diego. 8.5 of those million were for this park. We got Prop 68 funding. Um, and when I talked to the deputy director of, of Prop 68, what he told me is the city of San Diego doesn't apply to Prop 68. He said the city of Imperial Valley applies at a higher rate than, prop, than, um, than the city of San Diego. So, um, I, and also we got $8.5 million. Because of inflation, we're short about five-ish. Um, the city today just approved 2.5 for community development block grants. Uh, one of the things that um, I am not too proud to beg, I beg Prop 68, I beg the mayor, I beg whomever it takes if it's for my community. So this is your call to action. If you know Ben Wesso, Senator Ben Wesso, um, if you have him on, on a text on speed dial, um, I would highly recommend that you please contact him and ask him to fund the, last, the, the, the $3 million that we're missing on this project. Uh, the state of California has a surplus of fifty billion with the B dollars. So I, you know, he could he could toss. I'm sure if one of you guys call him um, or one of you gals call him, he'll be able to give us uh, a good three million, uh, and that would close the gap, and we would be uh, we would be ready to go to get um, to get our park underway. Y lo tengo que traducir. <laughs> Bayer Park es un parque que, no, que fue, también es un, es un eh, proyecto de mejoramientos capitales que nos lo prometieron hace 20 años. Este parque se va a encontrar al fondo de esta calle, de la Bayer, y actualmente eh, recibimos 8.5 millones de dólares de un fondo de dinero del Estado que se llama Proposition 68. Cuando yo platiqué con los encargados de Prop 68, me dijeron que la ciudad simplemente no aplica por estos fondos que son de nosotros, o sea, nos pertenecen a nosotros. Así que ha sido un enfoque mío como regidora, es, nos dicen que no hay dinero, siempre dicen no hay dinero en el presupuesto y nos enseñan sus, sus dibujos bonitos que dicen, mire, esta es la necesidad y este es el dinero. Y yo siempre les he dicho, busquen el dinero donde puedan, porque hay mucho dinero. Cuando yo hablé con el señor, los encargados de Prop 60, me dijeron que la ciudad de San Diego simplemente no aplica que Imperial Valley aplica más que la ciudad de San Diego. Así que, y ah, otra cosa que mencioné es que el año pasado eh, fuimos, we were successful, eh, el año pasado este distrito recibió 30.5 mil, 30.5 mil, ¿verdad? 30 million, millones, mil millones de dólares porque pedimos dinero. 8.5 fue de aquí, de Bayer Park, y 22.7 fue de Trade Corridor Funds para un proyecto en la mesa de Otay que se llama La Miria. Si están, I forgot to mention that we received uh, $22.7 million for La Miria, um, but that's in Otay Mesa, so you're going to have to get that update at the Otay Mesa um, uh, update. So another project I'd like to share with you guys tonight is the Coral Gate uh, Neighborhood Park. Is there anybody here from Coral Gate? Awesome. Okay. So here we go. So uh, the total budget, uh, the total project, according to a recent, uh, uh, re the re most recent release, is that the project is going to be about $4 million. Um, in f the, the fact that the city's waited so long to build these projects is killing us because this project 10 years ago would have been half of this price, right? Um, so um, we're still in the conceptual, I'm sorry, the conceptual design was completed in 2021 and uh, we're, I believe, oh, we received $80,000 for the San Ysidro Urban Community Fund uh, for this fiscal year 22. Um, but we still need your advocacy that this is something that I added to the budget um, as a request line item uh, to, so, so it can come to fruition. Um, potential Prop 68 funding, right? That's another one. Um, en español, Coral Gate Park, este es el, vamos a hacer mejoramientos para el parque de Coral Gate. Eh, este año, re, las recifas, la recif, no, the proposed budget is, um, el presupuesto, según para este parque, son ahora cuatro millones de dólares. Se lo juro que no soy traductora, eh, pero estoy intentando lo mejor que pueda. El, el diseño se completó en el 2021, ahora no necesitamos capital para ese proyecto. Um, let's go on to the next slide. The next is the old San Isidro Library. 
Um, this old San Isidro library, we didn't, once we built this library, we didn't just leave that library and walk away uh, like, like what happened up in Logan. That's what happened in Logan Heights, that they built a brand new library 15 years ago and they left that building dilapidated essentially. We had a plan, we have a plan. This is gonna be a teen center run by the city's park and rec, um, and it's gonna have everything you guys can think about. Uh, the ribbon, uh, cutting, the um, ribbon cutting ceremony is gonna be sometime soon. We're just waiting on some, um, we're waiting on some dates from the mayor, that's all. You guys are all welcomed. Um, este, esta es la biblioteca nueva, y digo perdón vieja, la de 1923, este va a ser un centro recreativo para los niños, los jóvenes, adolescentes en nuestra comunidad. Así que, let's go to the next one. Um, also in August 2021, we approved $40 million uh, for street initiatives. Uh, this is resurfacing roads that have been historically neglected. Um, I know that San Isidro needs is in deep urgency of better infrastructure. And uh, these are roads that are, um, that are just in San Isidro. We have the longer list, if you guys are interested in. But if you guys have um, potholes or um, you know, streets that are dilapidated, please, please, please communicate with us or also report it on the Get It Done app. Um, that's a perfect way. Of, the number one is you guys drive these streets, the, the, the streets of your home, every single day. Um, I don't. So let us know, and we're, ha we're happy to accommodate. How they decide these streets is actually on the overall condition index. And part of that decision is also how many times the residents contact the city. So it's very important for you guys to be reporting. Estas son las calles de no más de San Isidro que se van a que se van a mejorar. Tenemos la lista completa de las otras calles en todo el distrito 8. Eh, pero como les estaba mencionando, por favor, necesitamos que reporten si hay baches y también eh, cualquier cosa que esté sucediendo en su en su calle. Eh, vamos a hacer un, un assessment. Anybody help me with una, vamos a hacer, cada, cada cuatro años hacen una auditoría de cuáles calles se necesitan mejorar, ¿verdad? Eh, uno de las, una de las categorías que usan para mejorar las calles es cuánta gente llama. Así que, por favor, llamen, reporten, todo lo que esté pasando en su, en su, en su calle, por favor. Y también, obviamente, Alondra está aquí y normalmente me representa en las comunidades, en las, en las juntas, en las diferentes juntas. Okay, let's go on to the next section and let me drink. Okay, so I want to touch bases on the small business relief program and also the rental assistant program. Um, for the small business assistant, there are several programs. Uh, the City of San Diego's CARES Act Revolving Loan Fund, it provides up to $95,000 in economic assistance. Uh, to City of San Diego's businesses impacted uh, by COVID-19. Eh, estos son fondos que se prestan hasta 95 mil dólares a las compañías que, que han sido impactadas por la pandemia. Eh, son hasta 95 mil dólares eh, las que se van a, las que se pueden, eh, se puede aplicar por hasta 25 mil. <coughs> also, um, we do have the Small Business Development Center, uh, and they can help you with applying for, um, for relief. They can help you with, um, you know, walking you through the application. También tenemos el Centro de, de Negocios Pequeños, eh, Small Business Development Center, y ellos lo, les pueden ayudar con las aplicaciones y, y, y lo que necesiten, básicamente. Es un, es un departamento de la ciudad de San Diego. And so let's move, okay, rental assistance. Uh, a lot of people were obviously impacted by the pandemic. Uh, a lot of people were impacted uh, as, uh, you know, they weren't able to work. So uh, the city of San Diego did receive funding to help for rental assistance. Um, this was so important to us, not only for rent, but also for, uh, for public utilities. Uh, so I pushed uh, the San Diego housing, I pushed really hard for our communities to be involved in the discussion. So much so uh, that I often joke, I got the mayor to speak in Spanish on the radio with me, right, to promote uh, these programs. Um, I think through, throughout, I think we've received about $170 million of grants. 
Um, and uh, the application was, uh, was, all the applications were finalized March 31st. So that's when they were due. And uh, last but not least, ah, no lo dije en español, eh, asistencia de, de renta y también de utilidades públicas para las personas que fueron impactadas por la pandemia. Mucha gente no pudo pagar su, su renta y sus utilidades públicas, así que la, la ciudad de San Diego recibió 170 mil millones de dólares para ayudar a la gente. La gente tenía que aplicar. Y lo que hicimos yo y el alcalde, Todd Gloria, es estuvimos en la radio promoviendo eh, promoviendo eh, la asistencia, la aplicación. Uh, and so, also, we have Youth Opportunity Passes. It is a pilot program. It is sponsored by Sandag and the County of San Diego. So, anybody 18 and under is going to ride the trolley and MTS for free until July 31st, 2023. You have to download the app or you have to get a Pronto card. They should have reached out to Sweetwater. They did. Oh, that's music to my ears. Thank you so much. Eh, también tenemos las, la, uh, I don't know how to say youth opportunity passes in Spanish. Do you know? Please. Sí. So básicamente sí son, son pases para los jóvenes de 18 para abajo que, eh, que ahora no tienen que pagar para subirse en un camión o para subirse en, en un trolley. Y eso, este es un programa piloto que se va a hacer hasta julio 31, 2023. Así que el papá o la mamá tiene que tener su, su tarjeta de Pronto, ¿verdad? Y el, el joven o la joven tiene que tener o la tarjeta o lo puede lo puede bajar en su teléfono. Oh, Casa Familiar has 200 pronto cards, so that's where that's where we want to go. Okay, so um, the last couple of, of years, it's been like no other. We, we, you know, there's no way to spin it. Um, we were the hardest hit community, hands down, San Isidro was. Um, not only were we, you know, cooped up in our home, they closed our border, they, you know, really hurt our commerce, right? And I say the pandemic hurt our commerce. Um, but it was important for me, to st me and my staff, to stay very present and very involved in the community. Obviously, it was very difficult uh, because we couldn't have events like this. So um, we actually went out into the community and I found that a good way to communicate with folks is through our cleanups. So we literally cleaned up San Isidro Boulevard. We cleaned up the fire station. Um, and we, we started to have these big 40-foot dumpster, uh, dumpster trucks so that community can come out and you could throw away whatever you wanted. And Vivian can say, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? Do you need rental assistance? We're here to help. And so we did 60 of these, you guys. We did 60 throughout all of District 8. Um, I have to say San Isidro is obviously get there early because it fills up after like two hours. So eh, la pandemia fue muy difícil para mucha gente, pero en San Isidro fuimos impactados más. Eh, nos cerraron la frontera, eh, impactaron muchos negocios y también eh, fue difícil comunicar con la, con, para mí comunicar con los residentes. Así que empezamos a hacer limpiezas en la comunidad. Yo, Vivian Moreno, Gerardo, eh, hasta mi chief of staff salimos y barrimos San Isidro Boulevard, limpiamos la, 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 estación, la estación de bomberos y también de esto salió eventos para, de limpieza, donde, donde sacamos los tambos de 40 pies, tres tambos de 40 pies, donde la gente podía sacar, podía tirar lo que quisiera. Mucha gente estábamos limpiando, ¿verdad? Así que tuvimos 60 de estos eventos, no nomás en San Isidro, en todo el distrito. Y también otra cosa que hicimos es pues el, el repartir comida, que eso también fue muy importante. Y, y eh, fuimos, eh, we were partners, eh, nos juntamos con San Isidro School District, con Casa Familiar, con Hearts and Hands, salimos, eh, you name it, ahí estuvimos, ¿verdad? Así que uh, we did uh, food drives as well, as that, those were very important, and we partnered up with um, with uh, Casa Familiar, with Hearts and Hands, with San Isidro School District, uh, Sweetwater, we were at Southwest, um, and also um, um, 
various nonprofits. Um, the other thing that we did is once the um, once the vaccines became available, uh, we did pop up, pop-ups, right? We did pop-ups for vaccinations. Uh, one of the first pop-ups that the city of San Diego had was actually at Montgomery High School. And that's where I told, once again, I told Mary Gloria, Sweetwater is ready. The kids have been impacted there. I think at the time there was 25 kids who had had a death in their immediate family. So we kicked it up to gear. We put it in safe places like Sims, um, elementary. And so we had these vaccination sites and places where people were comfortable. Now we went a little bit uh, to the next level and we actually, my staff and I, we went door to door to notify people about these vaccination sites. We wore masks, we knocked, we went back and we said, hey, we're here. There's a vaccination this Saturday. I'm getting vaccinated. You should come out. By the way, here's information on rental assistance. Here's information on food distributions. Um, and here I am, that's in San Isidro actually, um, uh, having people um, uh, you know, know what's happening. We also had events like this in the northern part of our district. Uh, we partnered up with family health centers in the northern part of our districts. Um, I really like the door-to-door -door because I think that's where you get the most interaction from folks. Um, also, we're, 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 not, we're not done though. <laughs> Um, the, the other thing that we've been doing is we've been doing uh, pop-up events. So for your cats and for your dogs, we're giving to the community free vaccinations, free licensing, uh, training. We've had um, the, the last pop-up event, I think we had about 80 pets uh, that received low-cost vaccinations and over 100 that were microchipped. We're, and we don't ask you. Also with our cleanups, we don't ask you, here, do you live in San Isidro? You could go to any one of our cleanups. I highly recommend you guys follow me on Facebook. That's where you know where we will be. We're having a pop-up event this Saturday in Memorial. Um, the one thing is it's, it's first come, first serve. So get there early because these, these things just get packed. Um, lo que estaba comentando es que cuando, cuando salió la, la, la vacuna contra el COVID, nosotros eh, nos juntamos con... Nos juntamos con eh, Sweetwater Unified, para hacer, para hacer va, distribución de vacunas en las escuelas. Eh, también con San Isidro School District. I forgot to mention that, I'm sorry. Eh, y, y tuvimos estos eventos donde la gente se podía vacunar en, en lugares donde la comunidad estaba cómoda, ¿verdad? Que ya, ya habían ido a Sims, ya sabían lo que era Montgomery High School. Eh, y, y aparte de eso, nosotros salimos a la comunidad, yo salí a la comunidad tocando de puerta en puerta, ahí me ven, aquí estoy en San Isidro, eh, notificando a la gente que estos eventos estaban, estaban pasando, ¿verdad? Y aparte de, de la vacuna, también les, les pedíamos, ¿necesitan comida? Aquí está la lista de todas las distribuciones de comida en la comunidad. Necesitan asistencia con renta o utilidades del proyecto, de la aplicación que le estaba comentando anterior. Y, y pues fue nuestra forma de comunicarnos ya cuando las cosas estaban mejorando, ¿verdad? Y así que pues para mí siempre ha sido muy importante la representación de la comunidad. Siempre digo esto en cada junta que, que, que hablo es que en, en la, y no, se me hace que no lo ha comentado, I'll share this in English with you guys too, pero cuando yo trabajaba en la industria de metal, alguien me dijo, tú le haces caso a la persona que te puede correr, la que te da el trabajo y la que te corre, ¿verdad? Y en este caso son ustedes, para mí. Ustedes son mis jefes, no los desarrolladores, o no, ustedes. Así que para mí es muy importante oír, de lo que lo que necesitan lo que yo necesito saber de su comunidad y pues estar al tanto. I, I, I've shared this story, but I've never said I've never told you guys the background. Uh, when I was in the metal industry, um, I had an HR director that said, "You listen to whomever can hire and fire you, right? That's who you listen to." And in my case, uh, the District 8 residents are the ones who could hire and fire me. So I listen to you guys, not to the developers and. If you guys follow me on city council, I'm, I have an independent streak because I always have the communities in my, the community of District 8, all the communities in mind. And so with that, um, I'd like to open up uh, for questions and comments and take a little breather here. <laughs> so we went ahead and uh, collected, pre-collected some questions from the audience. We did receive close to 20, a little over 20 
In the event that we cannot get through to all of the questions, uh, I do direct for your question to be sent over to Alondra, which she'll go ahead and collect your information and respond to you directly. Uh, por el tiempo que tenemos limitado, si por cualquier cosa no podemos uh, responder a su pregunta, puede ir con Alondra y ella va a tomar sus datos y lo puede, puede responder a su pregunta directamente. So we went ahead and just filtered some questions. And so the first question is, there's two routes to, uh, two bus routes to San Isidro and Otay. What are the options and possibility of being able to use one of those bus routes to service San Isidro High School? Hay, hay dos autobuses que van a San Isidro y a Otay. ¿Cuál es la posibilidad de poder usar uno de esas rutas de autobús para ir a San Isidro High School? Well, I think all you have to do is, um, I thought there was already a bus route, MTS bus route, going to, can, can we let the principal speak to it? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, back in 2019, the Sweetwater School District discontinued the bus routes coming to San Isidro. This young man right here was in the news for walking three miles up Otay Mesa Road and back. I'm a surveyor, so I looked at the maps and I proposed to you back then, there's two bus routes that go from the Irish Trolley mm -hmm. directly to Browns Field. So my proposal was take one of those routes, bring them down Otay Mesa Road to the uh, Fire Street Trolley. That way the kids can go up and down mm -hmm. and ride the bus, and especially now for free because of the program that you got yeah. going on. So that was basically my question. Okay. Back then, I'm asking you again. I believe the Iris to, to Otay is a uh, fast route. I believe it's the 905, if I'm not mistaken. And, and so they, that one goes straight, right? It doesn't make any stops. So that one would be, and that's from a pot of funding. There is a bus uh, that, that goes to San Isidro. Um, but, you know, if that is a concern, absolutely please um, specify, you know, uh, specify, let, let me know where you think the or, you know where do you think the bus um we, we we bring up another matter right do you want the bus to stop it start in coral gate do you want it to start in, in iris station so and obviously as a surveyor you know that we would have to get an engineer on this so if this is something that as the principals here if this is something that's of um you know of top priority then we absolutely can look at that as well. We can't control Sweetwater Unified. Uh, they have their own board, um, and they're also they're governed by the state of California, so our assembly members and our senate. We can't tell them what to do. Yeah. We don't hold their, their, their purse strings, if you will. So, I understand you're on the MTS board, yeah. and that's when I brought it up back a couple of years ago. So I just saw the map came up again because the story came up about this young man, so I thought it'd be something to bring yeah. up. And as I mentioned, if there's, if there is, you know, residents, please send them our way that are interested in this. We're we're more than happy to take a look at it. This is specific to resources for the local schools here in San Isidro. Is there plans to reinstitute the resource officer program at our schools? Hay planes de volver a instituir el programa de oficial en las escuelas. So as I mentioned, the school districts are governed by the school board. So San Isidro School District has their board, they have their budget, they control their budget. Sweetwater Unified has their board, they control their budget. Chula Vista Unified, their board, their budget. South Bay Unified, their board, their budget. And so right now, the city of, the one thing that I am, do, that I'm pushing the city of San Diego to do is to do joint use agreements with the school districts so that we can open up the fields of the schools um, after hours for us to go and, and you know exercise. But the questions for the school boards have to be, or for the school has to be directed to the school. Thank you. All right, the next question is regarding uh, the new park that's uh, being set up. Um, the residents next to the park, they're wondering what's the decision made about the fencing? Los residentes que viven cerca del parque que está, que está construyendo quieren saber cuál es la dirección de, instala, de, 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 la, de la cerca que van a instalar. Yeah. Um, well, I, there is no plan to put a fence right now, I believe. I, I went out there a few months ago. Do you have, uh, Gerardo's walking up, so he has the latest information. 
Yeah, I don't, sorry folks, I don't mean to interrupt. I believe we just had an update. Um, the, the back, or going backtracking a little bit, the property owners have, uh, they had gotten a, uh, an extension until May 1st to remove their property line, to put it back into the, uh, the property lines that they're supposed to be in. And the fence, I think the initially the city had proposed was a chain link fence, and I think some of the property owners had proposed a, a wooden or a brick fence. And uh, we have we're in contact with the mayor's office. The mayor's office, they're, they're spearheading uh, uh, the, the, the contact between the directors. So we are in contact with, uh, with the mayor's office. And I believe there was a resident, Jose Gonzalez, I'm not sure if that's you, uh, sir. Uh, he's the one that sent over an email, and, uh, and we forwarded it to the mayor's office. So we're waiting for the response. And as soon as they get back to us on, on what they decide, we're happy to uh, pass it along to, to you folks. But I think in general, we want the chain link fence gone, right? We want to park. Yeah. So that's where we need your advocacy to get uh, to get us that part so that we can take down the chain, chain link fence. So the next question is regarding defunding the police. We are concerned about those who wish to defund the police. What support can the city give to address this? Hay preocupación del tema de desfinanciar la policía. Si por favor puede compartir sus planes de soportar, de no soportar eso. Yeah, um, I've been, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm a very honest person um, and, you know, just look at my votes uh, to see where I stand on, on whether we should fund the police or not. Um, I voted to fund the police in all of our uh, previous budgets. I think if, you know, if I call 911, I want to make sure that 911 answers. Um, that has been, with that being said, you know, should we have more Carlos Lacaras? in the whole city of San Diego? Yes. I always mention Carlos as in a true example of community knowing who their police officers are, having Carlos bring out the PD to our events. And so, yes, I do believe in funding the police. Um, should we focus more on community relations? Absolutely. Um, and so, yes. Thank you. Um, esta pregunta es de parte del, de YMCA, de los programas para los seniors. Si por favor puede compartir su... ¿Cómo puede usted ayudar en los programas del YMCA para que no los quiten y para pa que puedan seguir usando el YMCA? The question is regarding the YMCA. Uh, due to COVID, a lot of the programs were closed and the senior population is asking what's your stance on being able to support them making sure that the YMCA is not closed. Well, YMCA is a nonprofit, right? And once again, they have their own board and they have their own governance. Um, to me, uh, I think, although I was on the YMCA Board Review Board, that's how Gabby and I got to know each other, actually. Uh, so I was a huge proponent of uh, Board Review YMCA. Uh, the city of San Diego also has uh, adult programming just down the street. Uh, so I would welcome uh, folks to go to the YMCA, pro I mean, I'm sorry, the City of San Diego uh, um, programming. Um, but I mean, we're happy to advocate. I know they were going to turn it into a, a community facility. Exactly what that entailed, I don't know. Um, I, I thought it should stay a gym, but I know that COVID impacted the YMCA deeply and greatly. They lost a lot of membership uh, because of the pandemic. Obviously, nobody can go to the gym. Uh, but I was a proponent of keeping it open. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, San Diego County has the highest electricity bills in the nation. <laughs> Please don't renew SDG&E contract, City of San Diego. And how can you support another more feasible contract? You guys don't get me started with SDG&E. I don't know if there's an SDG&E rep in here. Um, but I, I was actually one of the four council members who voted against the franchise agreement. And I'll tell you why I voted against uh, the franchise agreement. One, um, I think that it, we, we, had, uh, we basically gave up a lot for very little, right? We pay the highest franchise fees in all of the state. And as soon as that vote hit, guess what happened? Our rates went up. I mean, I live in a 507 square foot home and I'm paying 80 to 90 dollars a month and i am a stickler for you know if i'm not in the room turn it off um, i think the city in my humble opinion could have gotten a way better deal uh, but you know the powers that be voted on on you know on the side of 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 approving the franchise fee 
one of the things that I did get out of the franchise fee was um, was a we actually got a fund, an equity fund out of it. So 10% of the franchise fee, 1% of gas tax, and uh, what percent of uh, Transnet? I believe it was like 10% of Transnet funding uh, went to this um, equity fund. And this equity fund is to be spent in communities of concern like ours uh, for programs, and I'm sorry, not for programs, for uh, projects like the design of, of, um, of different capital improvement projects, for the corridor that we're talking about, helping us inch our way to actually having these projects come to fruition. And so I was not supportive of SDG&E and their franchise fee, and that's my humble opinion, and I stand by it. May I please say something in regards to that? That uh, contract can be broken within the course of 10 years, and uh, you, sh you should call the city. You know what? That, that's a really good point, because we just did an environmental fund. Um, Council President um, Shawnee Rivera started the... Um, is it, it's the environmental grant, and it mimicked the equity fund, and what that environmental grant is supposed to do is it's supposed to build up funding so when those 10 years come in, then uh, we're, we actually have the funding to move to uh, decentralize our SDG and &E gas. I mean, I could go on and on about this franchise fee. Uh, part of the provision that I thought was just ridiculous is that in order for us to unwind that franchise fee, we need to have six votes. And that was something that SDG and &E wanted. They wanted it to be very hard so that it made it virtually impossible to actually um, rewind that, um, that um, agreement. Also, any arbitration, we gave up the power to arbitrate, and we said any, anything a judge needs to come in and fix, which I thought was also giving away our power in the city of San Diego. So, no, I was not with, uh, I, like I said, I was one of the four people that voted against the franchise fee. ¿Qué tan importante es para ustedes la calidad del aire? How important is it for the city to address air pollution and air quality? Well, it, is, it definitely is important. Um, that is the county of San Diego's jurisdiction, though. Uh, so anytime you smell something, um, it is essentially the county's. They have the um, Air Resources um, uh, Commission and also the state of California. But look, I live in San Isidro, so I smell what you guys smell. You know, and, and actually I didn't mention the Tijuana River Valley and the litigation. Uh, as soon as I came into office, um, I was a strong proponent for the city of San Diego to get into the lawsuit against the IBWC. The IBWC uh, is, is upholding the Clean Water Act of 1942, and it smells horrific, especially as soon as 10 o'clock hits. I don't know what happens. They open up the levee. I don't know what. But, uh, but yes, we, and also the other thing I didn't mention was um, we did get $300 million uh, through uh, NAFTA funds, USMCA funds, uh, in order to address the, the, the issue that we have, uh, the sewer coming in from Tijuana. Um, also, um, but you know, it has to be a binational, you know, accordance, right, an agreement, because the watershed over over 90% of the watershed is in Tijuana. 10% of it is in our part of it. And we get the, the mouth of the river. So obviously we get the brunt of it. Uh, but I'm happy to go into detail on the Tijuana River Valley. Um, through SB 507, we were able to identify 27 projects in order to address the issue in the United States of America. Uh, those $330 million are gonna go towards uh, that infrastructure need. And, uh, but we need to continue to collaborate with uh, our Mexican counterparts. So we're getting close to our seven o'clock time. So one more question before we close it off. Have you been asked to help the Friends of San Isidro to locate the missing San Isidro World War II veteran monument? Yes, and thank you, thank you, for, uh, thank you for that question. I, and I mean, you know, Jack, that, this is something that you brought up many, many years ago. We looked for it, we couldn't find it. Um, I got word that that you're interested in replicating it, which, you know, yes, absolutely. The city of San Diego, um, each council member gets CPPS funds. Um, and I've always said these CPPS funds belong to the community, to District 8 specifically. Um, Casa Familiar receives the funds. San, San Isidro Chamber of Commerce receives the funds. 
Um, Borderview YMCA for many years, I think we gave them over, what, $50,000, right, for a, 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 an after school program with the youth. So let us know how much this project is gonna cost. I mean, we probably can't front the whole bill, but we definitely want to be a part of the solution for it. And we need a nonprofit. That's the other thing. We're hoping that it be in conjunction with the Peace Center remodeling you know, that's going on right now. Is there money for that already? Um, to be honest, I think the Park and Rec has their set of funding that was allocated previously. Okay. But I think because of the topic, Mr. Getcher, I think we're going to have a lot of support in the community. Right? I think, <laughs> I think the community is going to, and you know, my, both my brothers served in the Navy, so I definitely want to see that monument come up board. Um, the funding is allocated in June, so let, for next year. So we have some folks that come and tell us, hey, we need funding tomorrow. It was allocated, it's an agreement uh, with the, with the, um, with the, it's an MOU uh, with the city attorney. So, yeah, let's do it. Thank you. And Jack, I'm happy to announce this morning, as a matter of fact, was the Chamber's uh, monthly Board of Directors meetings where the Board of Directors unanimously voted for, she said, the need of a nonprofit. So uh, our board has unanimously voted to, to take on this issue uh, with your, with your awesome. leadership as well. So uh, we'll, we'll figure out a way. We'll figure out a way to make that happen. Please, round of applause for Thank our council you. member. Thank you very much. And, oh. Eh, sí, perdón. Le acabo de mencionar que hoy, hoy mismo, la mañana, era la, la Junta de la Mesa de Directiva de la Cámara de Comercio, donde votaron este, de manera unánima este, para apoyar el proyecto de, del memorial este, para los veteranos que perdieron sus vidas en, en servicio en nuestro país, en San Isidro. So, gracias a Jack y su, su liderazgo, y, y, y también a Car Carlos, perdón. Velázquez. Charles, Charlie Velázquez, este, gracias. Um, I think, again, I want to thank our educational committee uh, for putting this on. Uh, thanks to the council members' staff for, uh, for, for coordinating this with us. Um, and, you know, I, shout out for our community partner, Casa Familiar, has a walk uh, coming up where we're going to honor Council Member Moreno. It's May 5th? May 14th. Sorry. May 14th. It's the 5... It's the 5K walk. So make sure you grab, grab Lisa afterward. El, el, it was the 14th, right? La, el 14 de mayo hay una caminata para, en honor de, de, la, de la regidora este, para participar. Pues se puede hablar con Lisa aquí de, de Casa Familiar. And I just want to thank you all for coming out this evening. Grab, uh, grab a drink, donut, pan dulce as you're, as you're leaving. And thank you all for coming out. Yeah.